All right, so here we're recording. Let me go ahead and share the screen. I'm going to share the screen. All right, wonderful people. Okay, so let me make sure I adjust the size up here so everybody can see. All right, yes. That's me just figuring out what's going on. Okay, so look at the first one. It says graph y equals 3x squared. All right. That one, I was surprised that some people just said, no, I'm not going to do it, or like did it completely wrong. Let me make an axis quickly here. And let me zoom in on my side. I know this is a parabola. I have to know it's a parabola. All right, so let's see. When x is 0, what is y going to be? If you put 0 for x there, 0 squared is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. So you should have, I mean, obviously the first point goes here. Now let me make some lines. One, I'm probably going to make just two lines because I know this graph gets kind of steep very quickly. If I pick one for X, if I pick one for X, what's one squared? One and one times three is three. So I should see something like this, and then you pick negative one, it should be like this as well, right? And if you pick two, two squared is four, four times three is 12, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Maybe something like that was what I was looking for. And I think it's perfectly reasonable to ask for uh, you know a sketch like that, not the best sketch, but a sketch. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I would like them back, but whatever. If if you guys keep it and you don't return it to the file, but there's not going to be a parent conference, guys. You're not you you're not going to. Don't worry about your grades. Worry about the skills that I want you to develop. That I know you can develop. Any questions on that? I think that was a very fair question. All right. So now let's do the next one. Now I write a bunch of words there right now. It says if I were to change the above equation to y equals, and that again, Microsoft didn't copy this right, but you have the original version. And it says do all that to a show all work is necessary. So I'm going to go all the way to where it says given y equals 3x plus 5 raised to the second minus 4. And I'm going to adjust the uh, board here. So we have all these words here. And now we're going to start the, the part that matters. That's what I'm going to do right now. The number two is where I'm at, the verdicts, right? It's so. Oh, I, I skipped that part. Okay. Did it copy it? Yeah, it's there. I just put it all together. Oh, okay, there I see. If I were to change the above equation to y equals 2x squared uh, plus 2, what changes will occur in the graph above? And it should be, I told you to change it to a 3. Yeah. So, if I were just to do 3x squared plus 2, then all that would happen is you would have a vertical shift. I'm sorry. I'll put it up. Don't worry. A vertical shift. That means the vertical shift means a movement up or down. In this case, because of the plus 2, it would be a vertical shift up. 2 plus 2. So it would be a vertical shift plus two. So your graph is the same, except it would have moved up two. That's what that C does. 
We would have a vertical shift. That's it. So if you have the x squared term and then just the constant, the constant all it will do is control how far up or down it moves on that y-axis. Some of you wrote it different ways. You say my y-intercept will be this, you know, I accepted that. So I think that was pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's look at the part that says given, does everybody understand that by the way, why that's the case? So now it says, given y equals 3x plus 5 raised to the second minus 4, would, would you please state the verdicts? Well, remember that the verdicts has to be here, negative 5 thirds comma negative 4. Why? Well, the way I would like you to remember it is that whatever's inside that parentheses, you solve for when it equals to zero. Right? And then whatever's on the outside, the constant, you just write it as is. That's, that's the best I can do with that. Now, what's the equation of the line of symmetry? Well, it's whatever the x value is for your vertex. That's the line that splits the parabola in half. So whatever you got here, you just write it here, but you have to write x equals negative 5 third. You're indicating to me that that's a vertical line, which is gonna make split the graph half and half. So far, so good, right? So, so far, this test as is, right now, everybody here, if I, if I stop the test right there, you should get an answer. You should be able to graph it. You should be able to tell me is it a vertical shift in which direction. You should be able to find out, figure out that vertex because it's, it's clear. And then you should be able to tell me the line of symmetry and write x equals, because you realize x equals whatever is a vertical line. So now we get to the part, we get to the part where some people got it right. Some people made like these dumb little mistakes. But see, this form here, this form here, the one I wrote, at the, at the beginning where I said given, this is called vertex form. And the book refers to it as completed the square form. I don't know the does there, but completed square form. So how do we convert that to standard form? Standard form is this form. That's what it is. That's all standard form is. So what we do is we say, okay, fine. Y equals 3X plus 5 squared. I'm, I'm not going to waste that time there. You know that this means 3X plus 5 times 3X plus 5 minus 4. You're going to go ahead and execute FOIL. 9X squared plus 15X plus 15X plus 25, and you're not going to forget about that four. Therefore, you have 9x squared plus 30x plus 21. Because 25 minus 4 is 21. And you needed that to be correct because the rest of the problems was based off of that. Because do, now when you do, would you please tell me the values of A, B, and C? You would have to write 9, 30, and 21. So far, I believe everyone in this class has a skill to do FOIL, combine like terms, and tell me what A, B, and C are. Does everybody have that? 
Does everybody have those skills? I think you do. You just have to have it on the day of the quiz. You can do this, I think. So now we need to calculate the discriminant. We're going to calculate the discriminant. The discriminant is B squared minus 4AC. You don't have to have the square root. Remember, and this is extremely important, when B squared minus 4, I'll do it on the next section. Let's just calculate the discriminant. B squared minus 4AC. Well, that's 30 squared minus 4 times 9 times 21 which is 900 minus, well, let's see what that is. Well, it's minus because it's going to be 21 times 9 times negative 4 come out negative. Okay. 21 times 9 times 4. So that's minus 756. And we take 900 and subtract 756. You get, oh, wonderful, 144. So you discriminate is 144. So far, everybody here has those skills. Everyone here has those skills. Now, remember, for the next question, how many roots does this quadratic have? Well, our discriminant tells us how many roots it has. When B squared minus 4AC is greater than zero, meaning it's positive, you have two real roots. When B squared minus 4AC equals zero, you have one real root, which we refer to as a repeated or double root. Repeated or double root. And when B squared minus 4AC is less than zero, you have no real roots. Doesn't mean you don't have roots, but they're not in our real number system. Since this was 144, we say what? It has two real roots because B squared minus 4AC is greater than zero. And so that we would have said two real roots there. Again, if you know this, everyone here has the intelligence and skill to do this. So it's a question of, are we clearing up the stuff? Were you nervous? Did you study? Yes. Is it right if you take the square root of the... That's fine. I didn't, I didn't hold it against you. But I wanted to see two real roots. Yes. No, no. I would have just accepted this part. That's all I wanted. I wrote that because I'm teaching now. I'm pretending to teach. Oftentimes, guys, most of us are pretending our whole life anyways. What is it to be real? Are we ever really real? What does that mean? Anyways, now let's do the y-intercept. Y-intercept. So if you go back to the equation, to the standard form, the standard form looked like this. Right? And you put x equals to 0 here, you get y equals to 0 plus 0 plus 21. So y equals to 21. I should see you write 0 comma 21. You didn't even have to show any work, but if you want to show work, but that's what she's, your y-intercept is 0, 21. Not 21, 0, 21. It's a coordinate. Now, there's something I'm not mentioning now, and I'm doing it for the sake of time. But I have plenty of time. So let me talk about, oh, questions on the y-intercept. Is there anybody here who's like, I don't understand how you got the y-intercept? Or you, you, you know... It's just set x equal to zero. 
So now let's talk about the roots for a second. We're going to talk about the roots now, and this is important. There's two real roots. So let me go ahead and do it here on the side. If, if you have two real roots, this just means you have two zeros. Okay, that's all that means. That's important because your discriminant will tell you at least that you have that. If you have one real root, it's going to look like this. It's just going to go like this and touch one spot. It could be in the other direction too. And you know that that's determined by the A. If the A is negative, the constant in front of the X squared is negative, we have it pointing downward. So that's what a repeated root means. And the last one, the no real roots, how does that look? Well, that looks like this. It doesn't cross the x-axis at all. And that's helpful. That's helpful. All right, so now let's write the quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Quadratic formula is essentially solved completed square form. Okay, you got your quadratic formula. You've memorized it. So far, has the test been difficult? Not at all. Not at all. And the next part is not difficult at all either. It says, would you please set the y value of the quadratic to zero? So here's our quadratic. Y equals 9x squared um, plus 30x plus 20. Well, if you set the y equals to zero, you're trying to solve for x, right? But all you're supposed to do is say, okay, A equals to nine, B equals to 30, C equals to 21. Therefore, X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. So negative 30 plus or minus, Guess what? I already had calculated the discriminant. It's going to come out to 144. So I can just go ahead and I'm going to substitute it here because, you know, but you know that inside that radical, radicand, you're going to have 144 because we already figured it out. And so now you have negative 30 plus or minus 12 divided by 18. So negative 30 plus 12 is negative 18 over 18. And we also have negative 30 minus 12 divided by 18. So it comes out and negative seven thirds. So it's negative one and negative seven thirds. So what are the X intercepts? Oh, the X intercepts are negative one comma zero and negative seven thirds comma zero. Cause the answers are there. What are the roots for the zeros? Oh. The roots are negative one and negative seven thirds. Right? So far, is this difficult? I don't even know why there's enough, there's a lot of space there. So far, nothing, nothing ridiculous here. There's no thinking going on here. Just do, just do, just do, just do. Okay? 
I'll, I'll wait because some people are writing. And like we're basically almost done with the text. So if you mess up somewhere, sure you mess up and don't do it again. Well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're looking at your paper and it's like you're saying obviously, and that's why I want to. I want to give you an opportunity to retake this. And if I feel nice, even replace the grade. Yes. But you see what I'm saying? Like, it's not that I want to be nice, is I want to reward you for caring and trying to do better. Because that's not what it is. It's supposed to be like, I'm supposed to provide structure. And that structure is supposed to give you something to aim for so you can work on your skills. And a lot of times our skills are rough because we don't work on it. So if I stop doing this for a few years, it's gonna be rough. For you guys, if you stop doing it for a month, then you gotta, re you know, it's like you gotta start from scratch again until you get it. All right, so now let's do the next one. It says here, could you please graph the quadratic? Nice graph. Now, I wasn't gonna be like, oh, it has to be perfect. But let's just discuss what we have. We have, we have our zeros. We have negative one comma zero. We have negative seven thirds comma zero, which comes out to negative two, 2.333, right? And then we have the vertex, which is negative five third and zero. And we have zero comma 21. So if you had like a nice, uh, oh no, go back. Oh no. Uh, if you had nice graphing paper and you wanted to take your time, you could probably do a decent, a decent graph if you chose to. And obviously we'll do the last one, which is convert to vertex form. So let's do this. Um, I'll just do a quick sketch because, you know, that's what I do. All right. Negative one, zero, uh, negative two and one third. So it's like around there, let's just say a little bit closer, whatever. And then you got, look, I'm a, I'm a cheat there, <laughs> right? Uh, this is not, it's negative five thirds, negative four. Sorry. And one, two, three, four. And negative five thirds is one and two thirds. So it's like around here, something like that. And, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, we're seeing what? The dollars? No. No. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's it for the graph. So now let's do vertex form. Let's do vertex form. Yeah. So let's do vertex form. This is where a lot of you, uh, who got it right anyway? Somebody got it right. Vertex, the last one. Okay, so let's go through it together. And again, I'm recording it and I'm gonna write everything out. Okay, so now let's talk about it. So why, so what I would do is I would write, now y minus three equals two x squared plus seven x. All right, if it's in standard form, I gotta make it look like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go and say y minus three equals two times x squared plus seven half x. You saw how I factored there? In other videos, I've discussed how to factor that way. Once you understand what's happening there, you'll always be able to factor in that way. Add what? No, we moved it over on purpose right now. Oh, oh, sorry. Thank you. No, that's correct. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you add it. You add it to the other side. 
That's my fault. Okay, so now we look at this guy here. And we say, okay, that's seven halves. So what is half of seven halves? Well, half of that, you multiply by half, is seven fourths. And then I say to myself, okay, what is seven fourths squared? Well, seven fourths squared is 49 over 16. Seven times seven and four times four, because you're multiplying it times itself. Let me just write that out. Seven divided by four times seven divided by four. That's 49 over 16. So you're gonna go ahead and add 49 over 16 here. But did you add 49 over 16? Or did you add two times 49 over 16? So what you added was, what you added was two times 49 over 16 which 49 times two divided by 16, my lovely cock here says, and I should, I should be precise, that it's 98 over 16, but it wonderfully reduces it for me to 49 over eight. So I, I'm really going to, for note's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this like this. Right, But when I did that on this side, I had to add 49 over eight. Now you're gonna have to simplify the left side of that equation. Because 49 divided by eight plus three, my lovely calculator takes care of that for me, doesn't, spares me the monotony of doing that. And then I'm allowed to write here this side as a binomial squared. I'm allowed to write this here as if I have a binomial squared because that's what I did. That's what completing the squared is. If I take that and I do FOIL, I will get what I wrote on top. Remember, the motivation for this was to be able to solve quadratics. Now I'm almost finished. It's almost done. It's almost done. So what's the last step I got to do? I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 73 over 8. Me one second, guys. Hello? Yeah, you know, I'm afraid, but I'm not going to
All right, sorry about that, guys. It's so cool. All right, so, so now let's finish this up. So we're going to add and subtract 73 over 8, and now we have in computer square form. You can already tell there what the verdict is. The verdict is, well, when is a x plus 7 divided by 4 equal to 0? It's when it's negative 7 fourths, and you have this, and that's will be your verdict. I didn't ask you for that, but now if you're stuck on how to add fractions, I mean, you know, it's easy. I don't want to spend too much time on it. In fact, I don't want to spend any time on it. Make sure you have that Casio calculator that's really good at doing all this for you. Make sure you put the parentheses where appropriate. All right. So is that pretty clear? Was that test difficult now that I run over it? No, it was not a mistake. Okay. All right, so now the next thing I want to do is I want to review the other one. And I don't have it copied on here on my Teams, on my Teams, on my Microsoft whiteboard. Let me go ahead and make a marking here so I know where it is. I'm going to start writing there. All right, so let's do this. So we're going to go over all these radicals and or thirds. And make sure that what you would know what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is that you just didn't use the calculator to get your answer. Because a lot of people were doing the problems, but I was like, yeah, they're not justifying each step. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. So here we go. What's the square root of four times the square root of three? Well, that's the square root of 12 which in turn is the square root of four times the square root of three, which is two square root of three. Okay. Number two, was the square root of four times the square root of 12. Now, when I do this problem, I just multiply square root of four times square root of 12, which is square root of 48, but it's up to you how you want to do it. You could have just done two times the square root of 12 straight up and then and broken up square root of 12. That's fine with me. So in theory, in theory, this is, I'm just going to go ahead and just do it this way because they're both the same. And so now I ask myself, well, that's 16 times three, right? Square root of 16 times the square root of three which is four square root of three. All right, the next one. Any questions, guys? Guys and gals? Pupils, any questions? I guess so, but do it like me if you can. I mean, it's up to you. There's many ways of doing it. You can do it so many ways, as long as it makes sense. Like that one, I could have done it. I could have done it uh, two square root of 12, right? And then two times the square root of four times the square root of three, which is two times two times the square root of three, which is four square root of three, right? Could have done that way. 
Number three says two times the square root of 10 times three times the square root of five. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I can't believe you girls are talking about, you're talking about math, aren't you? Yes. <sighs> you nerds. I'm like, are they, are they actually talking about math or? Uh, well, I hope you do better. Three times two is six and square root of 10 to square root of five, square root of 50, right? And then now you have six times the square root of 25 times the square root of two, which is six times five times the square root of two, which is 30 square root of two. All right. So you got three times the square root of three to the fourth. So what did I wanna see here? Well, some of you just cheated with a calculator, but you should, I should see three to the fourth. Let me do it, let me do it a, uh, a different way. Three times three to the half to the fourth. That's what I should see. Cause you should know that the square root is really three to the half power. And then I should see three to the fourth times three to the four over two, because half times four is four over two. And then I should see three to the fourth times three to the second, which is just three to the six or whatever it is, 729. That's what I should see. I should see all those steps. That's what I should see. So far, is this tough? Does it seem hard? I know a lot of you are intimidated by radicals, but the math level for it is not very high. It's just, do you know your timetables, you know? What do you mean? Uh, I don't multiply what? I did. What, what, what do you mean? Three to the fourth, right here, right? Times three to the second will be three to the six. Hmm? Oh, no, because I have these guys. You could do it if you want to, but since they're both at the same base, let me just combine them. It would be fine, but it's kind of missing the point right now because we have three times three. Oh, my gosh. Why does it do that? It zooms right out. We have... Three times three times three times three times three times three. How many threes do we have? Six. That's, you know, I just, you know. All right, the next one is square root of 32 divided by the square root of two. Well, I would have liked to have seen you do this because you realized the 32 and the two, you know, they're divisible nicely. And it just comes out to square root of 16, which is um, just four. Um, now we got six, which is, should have scrolled that up. So you didn't see what I did there. So five, is pretty straightforward. I mean, there's other ways of doing it, undeniably. So we have six, which is uh, square root of 72 plus the square root of 18. So 
So the way I did it, I mean, it's up to you how you want to do it. A lot of people realize that maybe 18 to 72 have something to do with each other. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't that, that good, but I mean, you know, your timetables, right? So I, I will go nine times eight, not the best plus nine times two. And then that would be three square root of eight plus three square root of two, right? And I would say, oh man, I can break down eight again. Um, three square root of four times square root of two plus three square root of two. So that's three times two times the square root of two plus three times the square root of two. That's gonna be six times the square root of two plus three square root of two, which ends up being nine square root of two and you're done. Now, some of you saw that it was 18 times four is 72. So that worked out for you as well. Again, guys, do not be discouraged if you did poorly the first time around. Just work on it and do better. That's all you could do. Nobody is born knowing this. This is not natural stuff. All right, what about square root of 72 minus the square root of eight? Well, I guess you can break down square root of 72 as square root of four times the square root of 18 if you were clever. And um, then this one becomes square root of four times the square root of two. So this one is square root of two times square root of 18 minus square root of four times square root of two. And then you got two square root of nine times the square root of two minus the square root of four times the square root of two. So it's two times three square root of two minus two times the square root of two. Six square root of two minus two square root of two, which is four square root of two. And the four didn't come out. Now, if you're clever at the beginning, you would say, hey, 72 is really 36 times the square root of two minus square root of four times square root of two. And then all of a sudden, the problem looks simpler because you're done in a few less steps. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The math will work its way where it needs to be. Number eight, we got four square root of eight divided by square root of 12. Now it's up to you how you wanna proceed. Some people might want to go ahead and simplify first. Like some people might say, okay, well, this is four square root of four times the square root of two divided by the square root of four times the square root of three, which equals four times two times the square root of two divided by two square root of three. So that's going to be um, eight square root of two divided by two square root of three. So that's gonna be uh, four square root of two over square root of three. And now I'm gonna rationalize my denominator because that's what we said we were gonna do when we have uh, radicals in a denominator. So that's four square root of six divided by square root of nine, which in turn is four square root of six divided by three. And that's your answer. For some reason, this is supposed to be number eight and it says number nine. I just realized that. Funny. All right, let me start from the top again. 
All right, is this is this like super hard, guys? It's not. It's just, do you know your timetables? You know, do you know the rules? All right, let me go ahead and find number 10 up there on the board. So, number 10. Number 10 says 18 divided by the square root of 3. Well, we're just going to go ahead and rationalize there. You could tell that's all you need to do. Now, I'm always writing, like, I'm always going through a trouble square root of three times square root of three, writing, like, whatever comes out. But in reality, you know it's going to end up as a three, right? Because whenever you square something that's in a square root, it cancels the square root. So number 11, x to the seventh times x to the third. Well, that's x to the 10th. Number 12, a to the eighth times a to the fourth times a to the ninth. Well, that's a to the 21st. You add all the exponents, they have the same basis. Number 13, b to the sixth in parentheses squared is b to the 12th. We should know that. Number 14, number 14. There's an ant on my desk. And it didn't even go that far. It fell like, it, it's still alive, isn't it? They're strong, bro. All right, x to the fifth, y to the second, to the fourth is x to the 20th, y to the eighth. And 15, 16h to the 13, divided by 4h to the third. You can rewrite this as 16h to the 13, divided by 4h to the third, which is 4h to the 10th. Nothing much going on there. And my tablet is for some reason lagging today. It's really lagging. I'll just call you Did you get the other one? You want a picture? I just gotta flex for this picture. So I come out to flex. Okay. So number 16, 3m to the fourth, n to the second, but to the third power times 2mn squared to the fourth. Well, 3 to the third, m to the 12, n to the sixth times 2 to the fourth, m to the fourth and to the eighth you're multiplying the exponents what's three to the third it's 27 oh wait give me one second i gotta tell my partner to put the uh can we do it can we do it let's see if he's ready for it Yes, he did. He did put. That's my man. So we got twenty-seven um, times. What's two times two times two times two? What's two times two times two times two? 
16. So what's 27 times 16? 432, m to the 16, n to the 14, and you're done. Next one, 17, 2 to the negative 2. Well, that's really 1 over 2 to the second. That's what a negative exponent means. That's 1 over 4, and you're done. Number 18, 27 to the one-third power is equivalent to the third root of 27, which is 3. Or you could say... 27 is 3 to the third to the one third. Isn't 27 3 to the third power? Now, when I write it this way, it's 3 to the 3 third, which is 3 to the first, which is 3. It's the same thing. All right, let's do 19. 19 says 1 over 16 to the half. Well, that is 1 to the half over 16 to the half. Well, what's 1 to the half? Well, it's the square root of 1. What's 16 to the half? That's the square root of 16. Well, that's, that's one over four. Let me get in 20 in there, see if I scroll that up for you a little bit. D squared to the one third divided by D to the one third squared. That's D to the two thirds divided by D to the two thirds. So that's D to the two thirds divided by D to the two thirds, which is equal to D to the two thirds minus two thirds, which is D to the zero, which is one. which is one. Okay, and the last few, the last few. Yeah, I'm gonna get there, don't worry. I'm gonna get there. Once my, my tablet is, is, is bugging on me right now. That's okay, it's doing its best. It's obeying the laws of physics. So 21, 21, <sighs> you have X to the M times X to the N. Oh, well, that's X to the M plus N, you're done. Number 22, you have X to the M divided by X to the N. They both have the same basis, X to the M minus N. That's it, you're done. Number 23, you have x to the m in parentheses to the n. That's x to the m times n. 24. You have x raised to the m divided by n. You may write this as the nth power of x raised to the m. Or you could also write x to the n like that. And 25 x to the negative m divided by n. It's going to equal to 1 over x to the positive m over n. That's what you have to remember with negative powers. And then now you just write 1 over the nth root of x to the m. Like that, you could write it as well. Or you could say the nth root of x, but raised to the m power if you like.
It's recording, and now I'm going to stop the recording when I find the button that says stop recording.